All right, so now let's continue with lesson two. So I'm gonna press J to get down to lesson 2.1. All right, so 2.1 is deletion commands. So type DW to delete a word. So D, delete, word, W. So they're kind of mnemonic. There's, there's not a whole lot of memorization going on in Vim. It's really just kind of natural extensions of how you would use a language, which is, which is quite nice because you can kind of, um, you can minimize the amount that you need to actually memorize for being proficient in Vim. And you can just think of it like you would think of doing anything or speaking a language. So this will become more clear, I think, in this lesson. So step one is press escape to so make sure you're in normal mode. So we'll do that. Step two is move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow. So let's do that. So here we're at that line. Step three, move the cursor to the beginning of a word that needs to be deleted and type DW to make that word disappear. So DW is delete word. And it says, note, the letter D will appear on the last line of the screen as you type it. Vim is waiting for you to type W. If you see another character than D, you type something wrong, press escape and start over. So basically, when you press D, it's saying you want to delete something and Vim is waiting for you. Okay, what do you want to delete? How many of them do you want to delete? So when you press W, it's saying, oh, okay, you want to delete a word. So it's essentially waiting for you to kind of finish or complete that command. So let's see, so we have this sentence here. There are uh, some words, fun that don't belong, paper in the sentence. Okay, so let's see. Um, if we move the cursor to the A, there are a some words, it's probably get rid of the A. So let's type in D, W. So we've deleted the word, okay. So let's keep moving on. So I don't need to press escape because I'm not in insert mode. So I deleted a word and I've maintained that I'm in normal mode. So uh, just keep that in mind. So let's keep moving on here. There are some words, fun. Okay, I think fun is a word that shouldn't be there. So let's move it on the word that we want to delete. Say D, W, the word's gone. That don't belong, paper. Let's move it to paper, D, W, in this sentence. Okay, I think we're good. And step five is what we just did. Repeat steps three and four until the sentence is correct and go to listen 2.2. All right, so we can move on to 2.2. So listen 2.2, more deletion commands. So type D dollar sign to delete to the end of the line. So step one is press escape to make sure you're in normal mode. So we're in normal mode. Move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow. A lot of these have, uh, the, these lessons have a very similar form. So this might get a little dry, but you know, just this is um, it's just kind of how this is written. Step three, move the cursor to the end of the correct line after the first period. Type D dollar sign to delete to the end of the line. Okay, so what do we got here? The sentence is somebody type the end of this line twice. End of this line twice. Okay, so what we want to get rid of is we want to get rid of end of this line twice at the end there after the first period. So just so you know, there's a few ways you can accomplish this. Obviously, the point of this lesson is to use this new trick in our toolbox that we have, this D dollar sign. So let me move over here to the end of the sentence between the period and the part that we want to remove. So I can type in D dollar sign. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's turn off no highlight there. Okay, let me get back to this. Let me move my cursor back here um, and then type in D dollar sign. That got rid of everything up until the end of the line. So let me just undo that so you can see what happened. So again, D shift four dollar sign. That got rid of everything up to the end of the line from where the cursor is. So I've hit you again, and if I was to move, let's say over here, if I was to type in uh, D dollar sign, that would get rid of everything up to where the cursor is, which in this case is from somebody onward. So let me just undo that. Let me go back to where it should have been right here. Uh, again, D dollar sign, got rid of all that. Okay, so let's move on to listen 2.3 to understand what's happening. So th there'll be a little bit more uh, elaboration and, uh, to what we did here in this lesson. So lesson 2.3 on operators and motions. So many commands that change text are made from an operator and a motion. So the format for a delete command with a D delete operator is as follows. D is the motion, where D is the delete operator, motion is what the operator will operate on listed below. So a short list of motions. So W is a motion until the start of the next word, excluding the first its first character, 
E to the end of the current word, including the last character, dollar sign to the end of the line, including the last character. So basically we have D, which is the command to delete, and then the motion, which is, in this case, we have a collection of possible motions, W, E, or dollar sign, where each of the descriptions of those motions uh, are described next to those letters in this description. So thus, if we type D, E, it will delete from the cursor to the word to the end of the word so let's go ahead and give that a shot so let's move over here so if we type de over here it'll delete from the cursor to the end of the word so let's go to the cursor let's go right over here on the u and the cursor let me type in de so that deleted all the way up into the end of the word it didn't delete the c but it deleted relative to where the cursor was after i typed that so it delete up to the end including the last character of the word so let me just undo that by pressing U. Uh, so if I started here and I said DE, that would delete to the end of the word. I started on the first character, deleted all the way up to the last character, including the last character, and that's what that did. If I type in D dollar sign, you know, make a guess at what this is gonna do. It's going to delete everything from where the cursor is on that line. So let me just undo that. So note, pressing just the motion while in normal mode without an operator will move the cursor as specified. Okay. So that's lesson 2.3. Let's continue on with lesson 2.4. So lesson 2.4, using account for a motion. So typing a number before a motion repeats it that many times. So again, this kind of gets, gets more into how Vim is expressive. So we not only say delete word, but we can say delete two words or delete five words or delete X words. So it's a little bit more expressive. It'll, it, now all of a sudden that we can use numbers in these phrases, it's kind of expanded our Vim vocabulary, you can think of. So let me, as we go through this lesson, that might become clear. So step one, move the cursor to the start of the line marked with the arrow below, okay? So we'll move it to the start of this line here. Type 2w to move the cursor two words forward. 3 is type 3e to move the cursor to the end of the third word forward. Type 0, the number 0, to move to the start of the line. And then just repeat steps two and three with different numbers. You know, more or less just kind of experiment with this to see how it how it works. Okay, let's do that. So if I type in two W, I move ahead by two words. If I type in five W, I move ahead by five words. If I type in three E, I'll move to the end. So I'll go I'll go forward three words, and I'll the cursor will then fall on the end of the third word. If I type in zero, that will take me all the way to the beginning of the line. So if I type in, let's say, 10 words, that will move me 10 words forward. E, uh, sorry, let's escape there. 3E, move me to the end. Three words, again, the cursor is on the end of the word. So go ahead and play around with this. This this is one of those things that's like, uh, it doesn't seem super useful at first. Like, why would I ever want to move my cursor in this unique kind of weird way? Um, it does make sense. For instance, if you're coding and you have to add semicolons, maybe you want to get to the last uh, instance of something to add a semicolon on that. Of course, you could also use the append key to do the same thing. Uh, there are instances where these things are really useful, but if you don't see some examples it's it's a little bit more opaque as to why one would want to use uh, these kinds of commands. I can tell you that I don't use these so much. Uh, these aren't something that I use as much, but maybe I'm just not as proficient as I should be with Vim. So maybe it's my fault that I'm not using them as much as I should be. Okay, so let's move on to listen 2.5. This is a bit of a tangent. So listen 2.5, use it a count to delete more. Typing a number with an operator repeats it that many times. So in the combination of the delete operator and a motion mentioned above, you insert a count before the motion to delete more. So D followed by a number followed by a motion. So move the cursor to the first uppercase word in the line marked with the arrow. Okay, let's do that. So the first uppercase line marked with an arrow. Let's move it all the way down over here. Notice I'm, I'm hitting these J's and K's and L's quite a bit. So instead I could just I could count out how many words back I need to go or forward I need to go and I could use what we learned in Listen 2.4, uh, but I'm just using the J's and K's for now. Uh, okay, so step one is move to the first uppercase word, so we did that. Step two is type delete 
two words, D2W, to delete the two uppercase words. So I see that my cursor is on the first one here. If I type in D2W, those words that we saw that were completely in uppercase have disappeared, they've been deleted. And then step three says repeat steps one and two with a different count to delete the consecutive uppercase words with one command. All right, so let's move on to this sentence here. So if we move on to the next uppercase uh, series of, let of letters here, there's, let's see, there's one, two, three, four of them. So I want to delete four of these things. So I'll say delete four words. So that's gotten rid of those. Moving on again. Okay, so we have we have this here. So there's three of them, one, two, three. So delete three words, and we've got it. So generally, uh, a word, the way that Vim looks at a word is it's, in this case, something that's separated by space. It's something that kind of naturally makes sense, right? A word is generally, uh, as you would define it, something that would be delimited by a space. So while those that might not be words that you would encounter in a dictionary, in the Vim sense, Q, R, S, T, U, V, since they're delimited by spaces, our words. So I just undid that just to kind of, I don't know, make a statement that I just made. And I'm going to say delete three words, get rid of those, and that's that. Okay, so that's the end of lesson 2.5. Let's move on to 2.6 here. So lesson 2.6, operating on lines. Type D, D to delete a whole line. So due to the frequency of whole line deletions, the designers of VI decided it would be easier to simply type two Ds to delete a line. Okay, interesting historical note there. So step one is move the cursor to the second line in the phrase below, type DD to delete the line. Now move to the fourth line, type two DD to delete two lines. So you see how Vim basically, we were able to know that we could use numbers for certain commands. And that concept applies to this new command that we just learned, this DD, which allows you to delete a line. So you can put a number on there to say, I want to delete two lines or 10 lines or whatever. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's really interesting how Vim kind of gives you with the certain command, uh, if you understand how things are kind of chained together, you're really getting a lot of, you know, many, I guess, infinitely many commands because, you know, depends on how many lines you want to delete. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of power there for learning, you know, a single new command, you get a lot of expressive power. Anyway, so we're on the second uh, line here. This is the line that we want to delete. Let's just read through this because this is poetry. Roses are red, mud is fun, violets are blue, I have a car, clocks tell time, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Frankly, I think this is a beautiful poem and should be just left as it is, but let's just do this for the sake of learning. So we're on the second line. Mud is fun is not generally a part of this poem. So let's type in D, D. That line has been deleted. Okay. Roses are red. Violets are blue. That's all familiar. Moving down. I have a car. Clocks tell time. Uh, sugar is sweet. I Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure if those are part of it. So let's type in 2, D, D. Uh, and so we've deleted two lines, but we probably want to delete three of them, right? Uh, so let's type, I don't think I have a car, it should be there. Uh, did I read this wrong here? Type D, delete the line, I moved to the fourth line. Yeah, okay, well, let's just get rid of, I have a car, clocks tell time, sugar is sweet. Uh, oh, sugar is sweet is part of it, probably, right? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm just not a poet, apparently. Okay, so yeah, if I type in 2, D, D, that is the actual poem. For whatever reason, I thought Sugar is Sweet was not part of this poem. Uh, again, I kind of think it's great just the way it was originally. So just to reiterate, we're on line two. We want to delete a single line. We hit DD, deletes one line. We go down, let's say to I have a car, and I want to delete line four and five. So if I type in 2DD, that will say delete the line that I'm on and also the next one. So 2DD deletes two lines. And we have the subpar poem that results. All right, so that's that. So listen 2.6 is done. Let's go back down to listen 2.7, which is kind of what we've already done. Uh, we've seen some of this in action. You, you know that you can hit the U key to undo a command, but we'll read through this anyway. So the undo command is important. Press lowercase u to undo the last commands. Press uppercase u to fix a whole line. 
Okay, so step one is move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow and place it on the first error. Okay, so let's see, fix the errors on this line, replace them with undo. So it looks like the first error is this one here, the I, uh, the double I. So type X to delete the first unwanted character. Okay, let's do that. Now type U to undo the last command executed. Okay, so we type U and the I goes back to where it was. Uh, let's see. So this time fix all the errors in the line pressing the X command. Now type a capital U to return the line to its original state. All right, so let's do that. So let's get rid of all the double, uh, all the double characters in this line. So there's a double I there. Let's see, there's two O's there, two H's, two E's, and then two T's. So now if we hit Shift U, that goes back and undoes everything on the line. So if we've done a whole bunch of commands on a single line and we want to get back to the initial state for that line, we can just hit Shift U, which will undo everything that we've done on that line, where lowercase u just undoes the last thing that we did. Uh, so let's see, that was step five. Step six, now type U a few times to undo the U and preceding commands. So let's do that, let's type in U. This goes back and this is adding in the things that we were deleting with the X command. So this is taking it back to before we press Shift U. Uh, let's see, now type Control R, keeping the Control key pressed while hitting R a few times to redo the commands. So we're gonna undo the undos. So if I hit Control R, Oops, uh, control shift R, that's going to redo what we just did. So remove the I, remove the O, remove the H is next, the E's are next, and then the T's. So we've just redid what we undid, or undid what we, anyway, we did something. <laughs> so uh, redo is control shift R, so that's for redo. U is just undo. And if you're on a line, you've done a bunch of things, you want to get it back to its initial state, hit Shift U, that will get everything back to that. So these are very useful commands, and we've already seen, again, before this lesson that the undo is something that we, we use, so they are indeed, just think about how much you undo and redo in any other editor that you use. So this certainly, uh, these are things you want to know. <laughs> All right, so moving on to lesson two summary. So lesson two summary, to delete a word, or to delete from the cursor up to the next word, type in DW, so delete word. To delete from the cursor to the end of a line, type in D dollar sign. So I don't really know of a helpful mnemonic for dollar sign, which has a relation to the end of the line, but I guess the more you kind of use that, the more you get used to it. Uh, DD is delete a whole line. If you want to repeat a motion, uh, prepend it with the number, so the number of times you want to do something followed by the thing that you want to do. So 2w moves your cursor forward two words. Uh, five, the format for a change command is operator number motion. So where operator is what to do, so such as like the operator for delete is d. Number is the optional, you don't need a number. If you don't put one in, it's just one by default. But if you want to do more than one, if you want to put in a number there, then you it's how many times you want to repeat the motion. And then that's followed by the motion, which moves over the text to operate on, such as W, which is a word. So uh, if you want to delete two words, that's the operator is what to do, delete. Two is the number of words you want to delete. And then the motion is like where you're moving. So you're moving over two words, you want to delete those two words. Uh, step six, to move to the start of the line, use zero. So if you're, uh, let's say you're over here, I buy the zero, I want to move to the start of it, I can just press zero, that'll take me to the front of the line. And then seven, to undo previous actions, type in lowercase u, uh, to undo all the changes on a single line, capital U, and to redo, then that's control shift R. So I'm going to take a break at listen to summary, and we're going to continue in the next video on the remaining lessons. Uh, depending on how long they take, will determine how many videos subsequently follow this one. Uh, but thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in a little bit for continuing our Let's Play of Vim Tutor. All right, thanks.